we've had a great little break. I know things picked up uh, for yesterday, and now we're going to start today. Um, we've got the flow of the program, void setup, and void draw, and we re we're going to go through this whole review. But before we even go any further, I just want to say one more time, please, we give you the homework. We do a video. Do the work then. Um, you're really going to get a lot more out of it. This is much more like college. You've got basically right now you have three classes. You've got a video, but work to do with it. And um, in college, you're going to find the same thing. You might have a class at nine, you might have a one, you might have four. Now, if you continue in the engineering, programming, tech field, you'll have labs and science fields. You'll have labs, which is a little bit more than maybe some of the other organizations do, um, other majors do. But um, in all the classes, it's kind of expected that you'll have an English class, you'll meet for an hour, then maybe two other classes, but then the English class expects you to read a third half the book or whatever they want for the next time you meet. Because there's a very good chance the class meets Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So just kind of what you've got going on with college now. So it's really essential that you work on it. No, um, every day after you watch the video. I would not wait until the homework was due. All right, so we have voids. So talking about flow of the program, we started out, we talked about there's two parts to every um, process program, void setup, void draw, which I think is interesting. It reminds me quite a bit like Arduino. And so the difference is... Um, the difference is the Arduino code is void what? Well, I hope you would say void loop. So you have your parentheses there, parentheses here, here, and then curly bracket left, curly bracket right, void setup. Then you have void draw and a code that will repeat. All right. And then so in a big program, a lot of times you'll see void setup, parenthesis, parenthesis, bracket, size, background, void draw, parenthesis, parenthesis, bracket, and then really the bulk of your programs under that draw background. Background might be a void draw. Background might be in here or might be there. It depends what you're trying to do. And we made some of these programs. I'm not going to go through and make them all. This you use with you if you've just got an iPad. You can use these things if you're using a PC or Mac at home. And so we learned to draw this square using the void setup. All right. Here the rectangle. In the corner, there it is. You have mouse X. We started to learn system variables. There's user variables and system variables. System variables are just what you would think they are. They're made in the system. And they're always there. So there's miles x, there's miles y, there's width and height we talked about. So here's a miles x. So this square is going to start at this corner right here, wherever my mouse is. Then the next value is going to be 250. So it'll be in the y-axis. Remember the y-axis comes down, stays positive, x-axis here. 250, 75, and 100. Now, when you ran that program, you saw the squares repeated themselves. What did you need to do to fix that? I want you to look at the program. I want you to, I'm going to wait, pause this a second. I want you to think about it. Well, if you do background again, you'll get rid of the previous square. If every time this loop through, it drew out the rectangle, you come back up, and there was a background setting back to blue, you know, whatever you want to call it. Background 0, 255, 0. All right, and um, wait, wait, let me think. Red, blue, gray. RGB, so it would probably be zero, zero, two, fifty-five. All right, my bad. And then we found that we could use the Y, and so now we're, we're we moved our mouse, the square would go around. I was hoping at this point you do it again. If you don't use that background, you get kind of a cool effect. Right, it reminds me of the card game on your computer, and then. This was previous mouse X, previous mouse Y. This allowed you to do like a line drawing program. And then we learned about events. So if you think about it, void setup is an event. Void draw is an event. You can think of them like those. So mouse press is event. 
And so with Miles Press, we can do the same thing with drawing the square. We move everything out of void, draw, you still need it there. Then you have by void, mouse press, capital P, parenthesis, parenthesis, curly bracket, curly bracket down here, stroke, fill, return. And again, it's going to allow you to make multiple squares by clicking wherever you put your mouse. It's going to put a square down. All right. But by the way, you need to print. You have to click for that mouse press to work every time. Okay. There's your background. Now this would what this would do by adding a background. Say you have a mouse, you click here, you, all right, and then if you run the background, next time you click, it'll erase the pre previous rectangle. So look at the logic here. Mouse press is the event. That's any time you print your mouse, do this. Background set the background to 255, which is white. All right, stroke zero 255 zero. This is the outside of the box. This is the inside of the box. Put it in this location. Next time you advance, clean it back off with this background. It like wipes it off. Now, if you wanted to control when you get rid of a square, you could always do key pressed. And what that does is automatically change that background to 255. So you click on the square, you want to clean off the background, you just hit any key on your keyboard, it disappears. And then so, got an extra slide there. So you have random functions, which is really kind of cool. It produces a random number between 10 and 100. System defined variables width and height. So the width variable represents 640. Height is at 360. So you can do a random width, random height. And again, we're just doing mouse press right now. So we don't even have to uh, really change too much there. And then so by doing that, one of those system defined variables, you're able to click the mouse anywhere on here randomly, it'll put it up there. Now, these are the system defined variables we just talked about, user defined variables. Well, that consists of what they are, in this case, data type, integer, float. We'll be learning more data types as time goes on. Then the name of your variable, for goodness sakes, make sure you're using a variable that we all use. Um, that makes sense. So you can come back to your program later and figure it out. This is an assignment you're assigning the board for to, to Apple. It's not for Apple equals Apple. It's Apple for, read it from right to left, for is Apple now. From now on, everything. 3.14 is cake. And the difference between integer and float, you're going to integer is a whole number, like you count when you're a little kid, float has a decimal point. So, these assignments, these assignment operations, so for Apple integer, 314 to pi kick, and it's a float. That's the variable. Some programs just, you just type out what the name of the variable is and automatically sets it up what it is. This is a function call. Make a rectangle, 40 by 24 is the location. Here's the uh, width and height line, 50 by 50, 100 by 100. Okay. Try, get rid of your key pressed. And try to get it in random locations. Now I even do this. Do me a favor. In random locations with random. All right. So get rid of key pressed. Event and try this right down in random locations. Okay. And also we could have said, honestly, you could have gotten rid of the mouse press event. You just want this thing to start showing in random locations. And then. Create this random and random locations, random RGB colors. Well, now you just need to start doing things like you've got this in random colors. You see how your color of your, um, the color is, uh, the fill is 255.00 for red. So these need to be, if you want randomness, I think we're talking variables. And hopefully that's what you did. And there it is. 255, 55, these are random, red, green, blue. Fill is now red, green, blue. All right, so this would come up with different colors. And then I wanted you to create color rectangles in different sizes at different random locations. Try it. No, we just did that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down a bit. I'm going to go over here, find the program, and I'm sure what it looks like. 
I'll bear with me as a second as I All right, there's that, 14. Oh my goodness gracious. So there it is, random colors. It took a minute, got it over here. Let's go over here with it. There's mine. All right. And just makes lots of really cool colors. I don't know, I thought it was interesting when I did it. All right, so, float. Rectangular's width, rectangular's height, float, red, green, blue. So my void setup, there's the size, there's my background color. Notice I start all off with white. Then I do draw a program. I said, hey, red is random, green, blue, rectangular width, rectangular height. This, this allowed the width and height of the square rectangles would be different sizes. This caused it to be different colors. So what we really should say is different colors. I'm just going to put comment this out so later when I look at this I know different sizes and then this was different locations. All right so that's the program that let's get you in and I just Oh, I got to put another slash there. I'm rushing it too quickly. Okay. There it is. All right. Now that's a quick review of what we've been doing. If you need a moment, take a moment here to pause it and review anything back that you don't remember. It's been a few days since you last saw this. Okay. So now, um, Go ahead and make sure, if you don't have it on now, make sure you have access for um, processes and we get ready to make some more stuff. I'll give you a moment to do it. All right, let's get going. As we are ready to roll here. Okay. Now to do this next part, I want to talk about programming errors. And you're going to get them. Lord knows that if you program, you're going to make things that don't work. And there's always in this two types for right now, syntax error and logic error. There's actually more. We can go on a deeper dive on this. But syntax errors, you type something wrong. You leave off a line of code. You don't put the semicolon there where you should have. The program stops, tells you, hey, this won't work. That's actually a pretty easy error to correct for. Logic errors are more challenging, right? Those are errors. It does what it says you want to do, but it's not what you want. So syntax errors, again, missing semicolon, bracket, etc. You can find that. Logic error. Program does what you tell it, but not what you want, because a program can only do what you tell it. So they're going to be hard to find. So let's start looking over here. Now, the best error detecting tool is the print line. It really is in processing because it will tell us the value of variables. Knowing the value of variables really goes a long way for us to understand things. So, I want you to go ahead, type out this program right now. I you go ahead. You can, I'm going to stop here in a moment and give you three seconds to do it, but please take this. Right up there, all the way down. One, two, three. All right. Now, when you go to run that program, you would see that it doesn't really do anything. So we got to figure out why. So before I even show you, can you tell me why the circle might briefly appear, but immediately leave? I would like you to think about that. Try to figure out where it is. All right. Now, we're also going to go ahead and try to run it. Let me see if I can get it over here. I'm going to go back over here. Oh, yeah, that's right. I've got to open it up here. So I'm going to go back into processing. 
pulled that one off. Cancel. Pull that over there. File uh, sketchbook. All right. Um, all right. Hopefully I can find this. All right, here we go. All right, let's get rid of it. So if we run this program right here, see nothing happens. Right, whatever I do, it just kind of weird it out, weirds out. I'm gonna get rid of five because we don't need that anymore. All right, so that's what we're getting. What would we do to bring that up? Well, bring this back up. We would bring up, because I want you to see what I did. If I had this print line there, print line right over here, I can then see, and you can't see it right here, but I'll just run it for you real quick and then we'll go. See the values there? The values are all negative. Remember we said X and Y have to always be positive? That's why it's not showing up there. So, here, I'll show you the code I just ran there so you can see that. I added, all I did was add the print line circle X to see what the circle X are. Well, it's giving it to me right here. Uh, there's a problem. They're all negative. We said way, way earlier, going back, that the X and Y coordinates on this are positive. Y going down is positive. X going to the right is positive. So if you tell X to be negative, it's going out to screen, and you're not going to see it. All right, and um, what I want you to do now, how would I fix this? What would I go ahead and change? Please rerun the program. I'm going to count to three, then I'll start back up so you can start yours. Now, if you look at the way we made my circle, if you did just that way, you get this kind of look. Uh, not very good. How can we make this look more like a circle? How can we make this look more like a circle? I'm going to pause, and then you go ahead and correct this. That's what I want it to look like. How did you go about making it look like that? All right. Well, let me show the code. Right here, this says 240, this says 24. So circle X is the location, the start of that circle, the center of it actually. And then this is, um, as we go through this, you're going this, see how this is 240 and 24? Try making that 240. It looks like that. Now, having said the same th time, and again, that's your height and width, by the way, on this. Um, if you're saying about the same time, you're going to go, well, if I wanted to make that smaller, what could I put the value at? Count of three. If you make it, instead of 240 by 240, you make it 24 by 24, you get the smaller circle. Okay. Now, What happens as we go back there? I just flashed up there. I guess I shouldn't. I'm sure read it a lot below here. How will we get the ball to move in both the X and Y direction at the same time? I'm going to go ahead and count to three. One, two, three. I'm going to say, go ahead and work on this. This will take you a few moments. I don't think you'll get this done instantly. So give it a few moments.
All right. Now, let's look at what I did. Again, if you don't do the code, if you just race through the video and see my answer, you're not getting anything out of this. You will not get anything out of this. So, if we can, we've got Boyd set up for 640 by 340. We have the X and Y circle. We have this moving. We did this with the X. You can do the same thing with the Y, and you'll get it to move. I'm going to go over here. Let's look at some of our wonderful programs. There's 12. These are these over here. 11 click. Sorry, I just wanted to get. I want to go open. So I'll circle the knot pure. So let's see. Circle knot appear. We use the print line. Seven bouncing circle appears. That's you know it's not really bouncing. There's our circle. It's big and it's moving all the way across. All right. And that's what's happened. It's a random number going all the way across. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you was file open. Egg open. Okay. Oh, that was the wrong one. Let's go here. Same thing, basically. Let's go back over here. Nine. There it is. Now it's moving both the X and Y axis. And you can see the values for both the X and Y here. I've them in the print. So let's do that again. There it is. If you look over here, again, you've got circle X and Y, but I also printed circle X and Y on the hair so I could see it. So print screen is really helpful when you're trying to get something to show up. All right. Now, let's go back here. So, we've got that. Let's talk about conditional statements. You have if then. So, conditional statement starts with F. All right. Okay, folks, there was an interruption there, so I'm probably off my video, but I want to get this knocked out for y'all. Okay, so right now we're going to get into conditional statements and programming. So that's really just Boolean logic. Um, once you know the sequence Boolean logic and looping and variables, I mean, that's programming. All languages will do it slightly different, and then you'll have to figure out logarithms and searches and everything, but those are the fundamental building blocks of all programming have looping, um, which we've already seen in here, but also um, sequence plays an important role, and then yeah. Boolean logic and variables. All right. Now, a conditional statement, as I was just mentioning a few moments ago, has an if statement and a curly bracket on this side with a line of code. And that's just like when you did the Arduino. And then here's your Boolean expression. So your Boolean expression can be something greater than, you know, relation. It's the relationship expressions go inside a Boolean expression. So, you know, less, greater, less than, greater than, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to. This means equal. We usually remember how we have variables we assign it. This is equal on that. And this is not equal. So if we say if ball speed greater than 10, parentheses, bracket, so if, bracket, write your line of code, do this. So ball speed is the variable, 
All right. And there's your greater than statement. All right. And then the end of it, your line of code. And it's just like any other code. Just put semicolons after each one. So go ahead. I'm going to do this. Take a moment and make this program right here. One, two, three. Okay, I'm going to pull that program up so you can look at it. Let's see here. Um, all right, there it is. I move my. See, if I move my, if I go so far over, it starts to change. All right. Now I can show you, um, let me see if this one has it. So what I want you to do, we got that value, we got it to work. So now the next one I'll show you here in a moment is make a program that turns white until the mouse reaches 240, then turns black. This is probably not a bad time to use that print line. You can see the results, and I'll do it right now. So what you want to do is make it do this. If I go so far, oh, that might have been the last program. Sorry, let me get the... Oh, All right, here we go. So let me do this right here. Now, get your program so it does this. All right. So I go so far, and it should be 240 over, then this thing goes black. See if you can get it to do that. I'm going to count to three. You can know it. And then you can unpause it. Remember, you're not going to get anything out of this if all you do is watch, look at my code, type out what I have, and put it in there. All right, one, two, three. All right, so hopefully you got that running. All right, now, now make a program that switched from black to white and white to black whenever you click the window. Okay, so now here's, here's the result of that, by the way. All right, make a program that switches from black to white and white to black whenever you click on the window, okay? Uh, and there's another result, by the way, the other one. So you, you, this is what you want to do. You wanted to be able to, if your mouse got so far, so like right down there, I've got the print mouse going on right here. Once I got below 235, it remained white. But when I got over 240, it went black on that last program. So right here, well, you were supposed to take it so your mouse would go over so far to the right. This would, It would be white, but then it would become black. And you can see I've got that print line of the mouse X here, here. You can see the values down there and there. In fact, let's bring this up a little bit as you see. So there it is. Less than 240. Well, this is 235. I'm printing the mouse X out there. That's the uh, variable, system variable. All right, it tells me wherever my mouse is. And the X right there takes that value. So I'm printing it out. There it is. Once I go above 240, wow, it goes black. All right, so background is black. All right, F240, background is black. This doesn't show it, it's the same bit of code, so, all right. Else, background is 50. So as long as it's 250, it's white, excuse me. Else, background is 50. Well, it's above there, so there it is. In this case, background is 250. If it's under 240, that's what it is. So it's 250, it's white, and black. All right. Now make a program that switches from black to white and white to black whenever you click on the window. Hint, you'll probably need the mouse click event and a user-defined variable. So this is what I, I'm going to take a few seconds for you to work on this. This will take a little bit. We Remember in the last lesson, we did a mouse click event. Go ahead and look at that. Remember. You probably don't need anything in your void draw to make this work. You want to be able to click on this, click on your window, and it changes the color. Click again, it changes. Whenever you click it, it goes back and forth. Click, 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 
keeps changing colors. I will show, all right, let me show you what that looks like. Well, so you know what that looks like. Click, 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 click. Like that sound effect? Whenever I click on it, it goes on it. All right. So that's all I want you to do. Count to three. I'm going to count to three to pause this and then bring it back up. All right, now, there's now make a circle. Once you get that going, and that probably took you a little while, and I hope it looked pretty good. It looks pretty sweet. Um, I want you to turn, when you get that working, I want you to turn that in for homework. And now make a circle go from left side of the window to the right, never going off the edge, but then rather, but rather from returns back to the left side. Um, see my example. So, let me show you one more thing here. So I'm bring this up. There it is. That's what I want to see. Make it so the ball does that. That's your homework. Those last two I just gave you. First one, I click on the screen. It says, say it's white, it changes black. Click again, black becomes white. It's always flipping back and forth. Make this ball just keep coming all the way across. All right. With that in mind, have a great day. We have turned this in through the classwork. Um, make sure um, I do it on the um, classroom, turn the homework in that way. Also, um, uh, make sure you check in with the office today. Okay? We just kind of randomly pick it in there. I like that because I like seeing everybody at once. So remember, it'll be from um, um, 1 to 2.30. 1 to 2.30. All right? All right, have a great day, everybody. Bye.